Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today we are in Santendre, which we consider to be probably one of the best day trips away from Budapest. So if you have an extra day to kill, this is definitely a great spot to come. And it only takes about 40 minutes from the center of Budapest. You take the Hef suburban train. It has an H in the symbol. And we took it from Margit Het station, which is right at the Danube River. You have to get your normal Budapest transit ticket for 350 hoof which you can get on the Budapest Go app or just from the ticket machine. And then you have to get an extension ticket for 450 hoof. Uh, that takes you to Santendra and you have to make sure that you stamp this on the train. And uh, nobody had actually checked a ticket. No. <laughs> um, it was a really old school retro, super retro, retro train. train. Uh, but yeah, the whole journey goes along the Danube River. So it's quite nice and cool and quaint. And now we're excited to be in Santendra and yeah. to have an awesome day. Let's go explore. And this is actually our second time here. We came here before, around two years ago during COVID. This is a really cute, little, quaint, beautiful town. It's like a little, little fairy tale village. Yeah, a little fairy tale village. Yeah, the population's only like not even 28,000 people. So it really has that small town kind of vibe, which we really like. So that's why it's kind of nice to get away from Budapest and come to a little quaint town like this. Nice place to get away. And it's lunchtime right now. So as always, we're gonna start with some food. Last time when we were here, we went to this cool craft beer bar called Teddy Beer, which actually has a nice little garden and it was really cool. We don't have time for that today, but it's really awesome that even a little quaint fairy tale town like Santendre has a craft beer bar. So we came to Rab, Rabai or Rabi restaurant for lunch, which is a really, really cool old building. Apparently this used to be a forge over a hundred years ago and they have all these like tools and different machines and a bike and lamps and apparently a great press. There's even a knight with a full suit of armor in the front. Yeah, they have all this cool stuff here. So it's really nice and they have a garden, which is amazing. When you come to Santendra, I feel like you should come on a sunny day and sit in the garden. And apparently the restaurant is named after a Hungarian book about a person who lived in Santendre and fought against Joseph II or something like that. <laughs> anyway, we're excited and we're hungry. The first thing we're gonna try is cold fruit soup. So this is one of our favorite things to have in the summertime because it's nice and cold and refreshing. Although it seems, of course, like it would be a dessert. It's actually an appetizer. And maybe if you haven't seen our video yet about Hungarian food, you should check that one out because that was one of the first things we tried in that video. It can be all sorts of different flavors. It can be peach, it can be strawberry, it can be, I don't know, pretty much anything. Plum, but the most traditional and most common one is sour cherry. And as you can see here, it's got this massive dollop of whipped cream on top. I'm excited. It's got big cherries, full cherries. Mmm. Mmm. That's freaking delicious. It's a little bit different than the ones we've had before. This has like cinnamon in it or something, like in the cherries. That's very unusual, but it's delicious. This tastes more as Ani would say, Christmassy. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know, you have to try it, but it's so good, so nice, cold and refreshing. It's perfect for a warm day like this. Mm. This is very cinnamon-like. I don't think the other one had cinnamon never, that we had. We definitely never had one. Mm -hmm. In the past, this reminded me of a German dish, which is called Rote Grütze. So maybe sometimes, depending on the region, different. It's like a jelly with all these fruits and cherries in it. And it had the same flavor, just liquefied. And this one doesn't really taste like that anymore because it has a cinnamon, but it's, it's really, it's really yummy. Mm. It's 
So what we have here is a Hungarian delicacy called Bekasambok, which is frog legs, as you can see. Little frog legs. They're fried and apparently you used to be able to get them more in Budapest, but not so often anymore. We've had them somewhere else. I think maybe in like smaller villages or smaller cities you can get them more. We got them in Gyur before. Let's dig in. I'm gonna rip off a leg. Yummy, the, the batter is really crispy and delicious and the Frog meat is very tender and soft, and if you've never had frog meat before, it's kind of like a mix between chicken and fish. I feel like the texture is a bit more like chewy or more like the dark meat of a chicken. But yeah, this is delicious. And it comes with vegetables. Mm. It tastes good. It's really nice to get a plate of vegetables with like a Hungarian meal because they're always so heavy and you always get like dumplings and all these carbs and heavy meats, so this is yummy. It's like Michigan J. Frog from Looney Tunes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. It's dancing. Mmm. It's delicious. The batter is seasoned really well. These are probably the best ones we've ever had. So the next thing we have here is a pork cutlet stuffed with sheep cheese. It looks like it has shredded mozzarella on it as well. So this is definitely something that you can find everywhere in obviously Hungary and in Austria. You find plenty of different stuffed cutlets. Some of them are filled with jam, which we found at the grocery store we had them. You can find them filled with different types of cheese, but yeah, this one is stuffed with sheep cheese. So let's eat. Mmm. Mm. So good. That is freaking amazing. I wouldn't say that the pork is necessarily super tender. It's a little bit tough, but that sheep cheese is amazing. It's really tart. I wouldn't say sour, but it's got a nice saltiness to it. And the pork is also really crispy and delicious. And it comes with fries, so this is a really good meal. Now we're gonna devour the rest of it and move on. I guess there's a lot of more fun things coming from this video. So we came to the Marzipan Museum in Santendre. Marzipan is a big thing in Hungary. They have a Marzipan Museum in Budapest as well. I think it's maybe by the same company. It's uh, Samos. Yeah, Marzipan is a big thing. There's all these sculptures here. They even have like one of the, I think, parliament building in Budapest and Princess Diana and all these royal people and just fruit and vegetables, all sorts of things. It's really cool. They have a room here where they make the marzipan and you can buy a bunch of marzipan. And it's just crazy because it's all this very intricate artwork that they make out of marzipan. And I love marzipan. In Germany, we eat that as well. And I do think that Hungary has some of the best marzipan. Probably better than the German marzipan too. It's really yummy. And I'm gonna buy some at the shop afterwards. It's actually insane how detailed these are. They even have life-size versions of Michael Jackson and as Ani said, Princess Diana. And they've got all sorts of other miniatures. They've got like a little Japanese one and all these things. And it's so cool. It's definitely worth the thousand for an entry. So if you're ever in Santendre, you should definitely check this place out because it's super cute. And this Michael Jackson one actually took apparently 336 hours to make which is crazy. You can see it on all these signs that they have next to the sculptures. And this one weighs 62 kilos. Like a real person, crazy. Good <laughs> <laughs> <But> Taylor. <laughs> one of two hands. So we got some goodies from the shop at the Marzipan Museum. And right here I have a bar of almond marzipan, which I think is just their normal, original flavor. Because if you don't know, marzipan is almond meal, honey, and sugar. And they basically make a paste out of it. And it just looks like this beautiful piece of marzipan. Mm. This is delicious. This is just not grainy at all. And that's why I like this so much. It seems really high quality marzipan. So they also have chocolate flavor and orange flavor. I tried the chocolate one. It's a little bit more grainy. Just the original is my favorite. Get some marzipan when you come to Hungary. Mm. So unlike Anya, I prefer this one because it kind of reminds me of like a brownie batter or something chocolate like that. Flavor? Yeah, the chocolate flavor. It's definitely more like 
cakey, battery. It doesn't really have the strong marzipan flavor. And you would think that I would technically like marzipan because I do like almonds, but this is more my thing for sure. They also have this marzipan liqueur. Mmm, that's delicious actually. It reminds me of Kahlua. Does it taste so, like the Austrian one? Yeah, it kind of tastes like that. It does have a little bit of a burn, even though I think this is probably only like... 17. Oh, it's 17? Wow, that's actually not that bad. It's actually delicious. <laughs> mm. So on our way to the next attraction that we're going to visit, there is actually a lavender ice cream shop. There's another one further down or at the beginning of the old town. They have lavender ice cream because Hungary is actually known for lavender. They have one field of lavender that's a tourist attraction, so lavender is a big thing. And we got lavender lemon ice cream or sorbet and we got the cream of Sintendre. So that's vanilla, strawberry and merengue flavor. Let me try. I'm going to have this lavender. It's dripping everywhere. Mm. The sorbet is so lemony and so creamy, it's so smooth. Again, just like with the marzipan, I feel like sometimes when you have sorbet, it's a bit grainy and stuff. But this one is completely smooth. You don't taste the lavender too much, but it does have a little hint of like bitter flower taste. A bit soapy, <laughs> but it's good. It's still good. And the other one, mm. it's going everywhere. This one's delicious. It's a very rich, creamy flavor, like strawberry and cream. Yummy, we have to eat this quickly. Mm. That's my jam. I love sorbet. I do think you can taste the lavender. There is a little bit of soapiness <laughs> that uh, I can only describe when I have floral taste in my mouth, but it's in the best way possible. The cream of Zintendre one is also really good, but I'm much more of the sorbet kind of person. And apparently the sorbets are vegan. So if you're vegan, you can enjoy this as well. I think last time we were here, we had the normal lavender ice cream or maybe the one with chocolate. chocolate. And I feel like it was much more noticeable last time, that the lavender awesome flavor. Again. Yeah, but they're all amazing. But now we have to hurry up and eat this because it's dripping everywhere. <laughs> so we're strolling down along the Danube River right now because St. Andrew is actually right at the river, which is beautiful. And we're on our way now to the Retro Design Center, which is a super cool vintage retro museum. Let's go. So now we're in the Retro Design Center in St. Andrew. It's just this super cool place with all this old school stuff. For example, Bunch of cameras that we could have made our YouTube videos with in the 70s. Except YouTube didn't exist right <laughs> <in. laughs> Apparently they are showing mostly stuff from the 70s, she said. I think 80s as well. Yeah, cars, electronics, toys, kitchen stuff, everything. Yeah. We actually were here a long time ago and it's really, really cool. If you're into vintage and retro kind of stuff, this is a heaven for you. It's, yeah, super interesting. So they have a list of prices at a bar, I think, from 1984. I don't speak Hungarian, but there's liqueurs and pralinkas for four, four? Am I reading this correctly? Because today it's like 1,300 or something. Definitely went up in price. If you are a car fan, especially a vintage car fan, you should definitely come here. There's all these old school cars, motorcycles, buses, and, and some of them you can even go inside and or sit on the motorbikes. 
and for example they have the Trabant car here as well which I read that they used to be very popular in East Germany and then once Germany merged they sent all their Trabis, that's what we call them, to Hungary. So that's why it is a very popular car or was a very popular car as well in Hungary. Hello, how are you today, sir? Ma'am? Hi, foreign, please. Thank you. Oh, thank you. The safe turn. Next stop, Octagon Station. So that museum was a lot of fun and if you guys are here in Centendra, you should definitely check it out. Uh, so it would cost, what, 2,500 foreign, yeah. but they only accept cash because it is so this... So old school. So old school, yeah. It's so old school they only accept cash, so make sure you take some out before you go there. And little uh, recommendation, go to Erste Bank because for us at least, it didn't charge us to take out any money. So make sure you get some money before you go there. So we came to this bar on the river called Riverside to have a drink. I'm having a mojito, Brandon has a whiskey, and it's right at the Danube River because we're actually waiting to take a boat back to Budapest because there's not only a train you can take here, but also a boat or a ferry. We recommend for the perfect day trip, you should take the train here and then take the boat back because that just rounds up the whole day. The boat costs 3,500 hope and it takes about an hour back to the city. It only runs on Wednesday, I think Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So you definitely need to check the schedule and it only runs from April until mid-September. So if you come to Budapest in the summer, you should definitely do this day trip and take the boat. So if you want to sit outside on the boat, you definitely need to make sure to line up in advance. We saw people lining up half an hour in advance, so we ended up inside. But we still have a beer. Kids actually sell drinks on the boat. back in Budapest. We definitely recommend this day trip to Santendra if you come to Budapest in the summer especially. You should not miss out on that beautiful little town and especially not on the boat trip back because when you come back it's just this perfect entry to Budapest on the river and you have all these beautiful buildings especially the parliament building in my opinion is one of the most impressive pieces of architecture around. It's just beautiful, especially at the river. It's definitely the perfect little trip if you have an extra day in Budapest. It's definitely a must do. But that is it for now. We had a great time, so I hope that you guys had a great time watching. So as always, give it a like, write us a comment, and the most important thing by far is subscribe. That is it for now, and we'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Bye. -bye.